Welcome everybody to this monster meetup on strategic portfolio management. Show me the money. And with me today, we've got Mr. Alan Went, one of my peers here in North America. Alan, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. <clears throat> Absolutely, Don. Welcome everybody. Very energetic starting. Uh, Don, appreciate that. Uh, I am a master pre-sale solution architect. I'm located here in Austin, Texas. Uh, it will be officially 15 years since I've celebrated my start date with the series of organizations that now culminates in open text. Um, I, I have the privilege of working as a, uh, as a portfolio analyst um, here. Uh, when I talk about that, I'm talking about the ability to cover the product sets that we have in the portfolio space in both Canada and North America and the Americas. Uh, so I'm happy to be here, Don. Thanks for the invite. Thank you for making time for uh, for things that are in the other piece of the portfolio. So thank you very much uh, for the time today, Don. Thanks for the invite. Absolutely. So uh, as mentioned, the 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 topic today is going to be strategic portfolio management. And I asked Alan to join us uh, to talk about this because he is an expert in the field. And uh, I, I happily defer to his knowledge. And uh, so I look forward to this. Like I said, if you have questions, please feel free to, to post them into the chat and we will do that uh, at the end uh, and we'll stop the recording and then do the questions and answer. And so with that, if you want to uh, go ahead and take over Alan and, and we'll, we'll get going. Absolutely. We're going to start off and you're going to act uh, as our, our, our controller for the slides. So bear with me as I... Just I'm your start. Vanna White. There we go. We Vanna White this for the next <clears throat> several minutes here. But when we, when we, uh, you introduced this topic to me and the fact that we, uh, we have the opportunity to talk to the Monster Meetup team um, here, I think this very successful, you know, coming into this environment, I just want to acknowledge the fact that this is a very successful group of folks that follow uh, Don's Monster Meetup, sort of fantastic, very lighthearted approach to this uh, kind of talking about around our products, but not specifically about our products. And frankly, Don, let's be honest, anytime we get to get on the, uh, the line with customers and we don't have to do a specific product demonstration, it's a good day. I, I kid me not. I mean, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So oh, I enjoy let's... doing demos too, but yeah. Well, the demos are fun. Well, let's be honest, sometimes uh, a break. So I come from a space a little bit unlike a lot of the colleagues that I have in the space because I was a business analyst coming into this role. And so coming from the business perspective, the business mindset and the project a PMO sort of mindset. One of the first things when you ask the question, what is strategic portfolio management? I think it makes sense to just spend a few minutes starting our conversation by giving you some history uh, about the space. So I'm gonna start off with a couple of definitions. If you'll go to the next slide. If we literally are doing this almost like a Webster's dictionary, the, the definition begins with PPM. And, and again, Don, you might, uh, you might ask the question, well, hold on, I told you to define SPM. Well, uh, yes, it's coming, but let's start off with the de definition of PPM because it's important because we're talking about origination. And the SPM story really originates in the PPM family of thought. And so PPM, let's start there. PPM as a definition is a discipline of evaluating potential projects and accounting for those projects, anticipating each project's either success, positive things, value things that they're bringing to the organization or risks uh, that they're bringing to the organization. So with that said, in contrast to that, let's go ahead and show the SPM uh, explanation or, or quote of, if we were to Webster dictionary this, uh, SPM is the process an organization uses to select prioritize and control resources within its portfolio of initiatives to meet strategic objectives. And immediately um, you may look at those two definitions and yes, there are some buzzwords in one definition, maybe a, a, some a tuning of those buzzwords, but let me even further clarify sort of where we came and the origination. So if we go to the next slide, I think a good place that we as practitioners will go will be to thought space leaders. And some of those thought space leaders include our, our glorious analysts. And one of those analysts being the Gartner Analyst Group. 
And so in 2017, I was able myself to attend uh, the PPM Summit, which occurred that year in Orlando, Florida. Remember 2017, Don, back when we could meet in person? I mean, I know it's, it's I, I miss, I miss being in person, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you could go to conferences and actually shake hands with customers and not think about, you know, gel on your hands or wearing a mask or wearing gloves, et cetera. So I had short hair and no, and no facial hair back then. So. It was a different day. It's it a different was a world. different. It was a different dawn. Um, well, back in 2017, I was able to attend. And this is actually the slide from a deck presented. And the slide title was the future of PPM is to ensure strategy is executed. And if you look at this slide, it literally covers um, sort of the classic tenets of PPM, the project, the program, the portfolio. And so you build up from the bottom up. And if you look at those descriptions at the bottom, you're truly concerned about doing the doing things correctly, uh, making sure your tasks are detailed, making sure you have collaboration. And then you go up to the benefits tab or the program tab where you're actually realizing those benefits. You're grouping projects together for some additional uh, valuable reasons. And then ultimately at the top of the pyramid, the portfolio layer is sort of where you're, you're flipping that uh, thought uh, kind of on its head. And instead of doing the right things, which that continues to be important at the ground level, you're doing the right things, not just things correctly, but the right things. And so with that said, the only mention here is the upper right hand corner all the way over on the right, the top bullet says strategic alignment. So even back then, they were sort of hinting towards a change. There was a shift in the market. Um, all of the at this point, uh, multiple years later, if you go to the next slide, what actually happened in 2019, 2019 and 2020 is that they actually changed the studies. They actually split their market studies into two. They, they uh, retired the PPM market um, uh, study, and they now have two studies, one strategic portfolio management or SPM, and the other um, APM, uh, also referred to as the classic uh, project management, where strategic is focused on that higher level, making sure you're doing the right things, not just things correctly, but the right things at the right time. And then the adaptive project management is one where Mark, it's more of a collaboration and true project execution. That's sort of a major distinction. Well, with that shift in the market, and at this point, all of the analysts, and there's three or four that we work with on a regular basis, have actually shifted. And so you'll, you'll hear buzzwords like transformational initiatives um, and dynamic engagement with the objects that you're working with. Um, so let me stop there for just a second, sort of check the pulse and also take a quick drink of water. Don, um, anything on there that would sort of already land you into more confusion, uh, dissemination of some of those descriptions, you know, kind of give me an idea, just a checkpoint of where we are. Well, I think, I think it, it it's uh, really talking about getting to the strategy level, right? So uh, the previous, the previous slide, the, the pyramid slide, you know, they talked about strategy only at the top. And there seemed to be uh, from, from my perspective, as somebody who uh, back then really didn't, uh, wasn't involved much with PPM, that it seemed like uh, tying back to strategic themes was almost an afterthought. Whereas, whereas it, now it, uh, with, with a focus on SPM, where, where strategic portfolio management is the first thing you do, you establish that strategic theme and then tie everything to that. So that, that catchphrase of in, instead of focusing on doing things right, doing the right things really uh, becomes apropos from, from my perspective. Am I understanding correctly? You are. And if we kind of roll back, I mean, and, and several of us also came from a service industry perspective and ITSM and those things in the service management space, what we're talking about here, and we, we still have that planning phase of all the work. And, and most of us are coming from IT shops, but the business is still there. From an IT shop perspective, you have to have that intake, that planning portion. And so it, it literally lives in that intake, that planning portion, if that makes sense to you. So it's there and it's now, if it was, wasn't as important now, it's definitely an essential piece of 
bringing new work into the environment. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I started thinking about, you know, things in my career, you know, I worked for uh, a healthcare distribution company, right. Where we just dis distributed pharma and medical and nuclear products. And one of the strategic themes there were, was uh, reducing the cost of healthcare, right. That was one of our strategic themes. So being able to tie things back to that and understand that's why something got funded, thus the money, right. Where the money comes from, uh, becomes very valuable and it, it helps to, to provide a, a, uh, a feeling of import and, and, uh, a feeling of, of doing the right thing in your own life, because you're, you're working on this small to you as a small thing that, that doesn't seem relevant. Well, now that it's tied back to that strategic theme, it becomes very relevant and, and gives that feeling of fulfillment in the world. And very similar in my own career, where uh, as a consultant, and a very young, uh, naive consultant, we were introduced by a partner to um, uh, working in this healthcare, also a healthcare industry, a little bit different of a state organization. But in that space, um, you know, we're, we're thinking about bits and bytes, we're correcting code, we're identifying defects, but we have an all hands call. And in this all hands, literally the partner started with, Okay, I want you all to realize that the reason that we're all here is because what we do helps to save children's lives. And in this case, we are supporting a Medicaid, Medicare project. And that's I mean, really for those of us that were newer to the IT industry and to business, frankly, with new jobs, it really does shake up your perception of why you're there. Um, so it's a really good point. If you're, you know, there working harder and faster to save little kids' lives, I mean, that's a a different perspective about the work that you're doing. This is a great. Thanks, Don. Just keep going. Yeah. So I kind of, you know, that's sort of uh, one of the reasons that we're here today is just sort of demystifying to break these things down. So for me, you know, uh, you, what you had before and what you have now, so a compare and contrast and, and what we call here a side by side. Um, and, and so what we have on the left hand side is, is sort of um, attributes of what's going on in those spaces where in this case, the very first uh, example in the PPM space might be how you are, uh, you know, your, uh, your schedule, how you're rolling things uh, uh, out based on time. And very classically, there was always sort of an annual process. Everybody hustled like crazy towards the last couple of, of months of the, of the fiscal year, or of the actual calendar year. So in November and even early December, you would have your annual plan set out for the next year. Um, that changed just in the last four or five years to a quarterly um, perspective, a lot of agile influence into those industries, specifically the IT industry escalated those things. What that happens nowadays in the SPM space, that would become a continuous delivery. So instead of it being time bound, we're basically operationally uh, operationalizing, I don't know if that's a word or not, but I just made it part of my language, um, the, word, uh, the word continuous delivery. So all of those lean concepts, continuous testing, continuous uh, delivery of code into uh, a production environment, continuous planning, for example. So in this space, it's always happening. So we plan ahead, we operationalize those exceptions. So no longer the days of a hot project that has to get done interrupting all of those annual or quarterly basis, you literally anticipate and expect those things to happen on a regular basis, continuously tweaking and modifying that plan. And so there's some other areas here where on the left-hand side, we dealt with uh, KPIs and the historical trends in the PPM space. Still important, you're still going to see KPIs, but in the new space, we're going to fuel those based on data and we're going to literally lean to some of the newer technologies of, you know, metrics and fueling those things with automation to actually display that metrics, those trending indicators. On the so left do you, too, so do you, uh, do you going. think uh, in the future uh, and, and you know how I like to, in these sessions, you know, talk about what we may see in the future, right. As, as experts in the industry, oh, yeah. do you think, uh, do you think that that data fueled metrics as, uh, as AI uh, continues to uh, become more prevalent in the industry and big data analytics with AI on top of that is going to help fuel that as well with those metrics in the SPM space? I do, I do. And recently we've talked about the GPT and those AI chatbots that are really 
shifting a lot of our colleagues that are developing and coding things uh, and making them think about the larger data sets. Well, in the project space, I haven't yet seen a lot of maturity around that, but think about it, Don. In a project, you're always, from um, uh, a data repository standpoint, you're always gonna keep somewhere those tasks. The, really the heartbeat of a project is the starts and the stops, right? And who's working on what, what their role is, and then what the task is. If you, if you put all of the task information into a data warehouse and start doing machine trend learning on it, you're gonna have some valuable lessons learned from that. But I'll be honest with you, uh, it's, you know, the project space is just, it's a, it's a building area. There's a lot of potential. There's folks that are doing things with risk mitigation, but not so far and really to the, uh, to the planning phase. So it's definitely an area for development. I just haven't seen that much. So keep looking, as I say, in this space. And I think we'll have some updates for you just in the next six months. Well, I, you know, just yesterday, I think it was uh, Microsoft announced uh, their competitive solution to uh, OpenAI's chat GPT uh, called BARD. So it's interesting to, uh, to, to see, you know, there are multiple big heavyweight uh, uh, solutions coming out into the market to help with that. I can't wait to really, check out BARD. The concussive effect. I mean, there's a lot going on in the space. And it wasn't just a couple of weeks ago that that really, that new uh, publicly available version was, was available. So that fast velocity, uh, just a few weeks, few days uh, before a large house sort of said, well, we have I, one too. By the way, I, I just got corrected. That was Google, not Microsoft that, that released BARD. <laughs> so we just, checked you. Have, so we yes. just checked you already. And, and like thank I said, you. an active group. And thank you Boom. to that to that person. You you are correct. It, you know my mistake. You know. Well, and here's here's the project guy going. Yeah, okay, fine. I, whatever the whoever is creating that, but there it is, Google. All right, I love it. It's a very interactive group. Let's keep going. Oh, one more point before you go to the next slide. I already yes. told you to go, but just the very last point there, the focus on doing the work right and doing the right projects, which we've been talking about, has literally shifted. And it really has evolved. So, and, and that's that's the word that I'll continue to go back to, especially when talking about SPM with my customers, is the word evolve. SPM, and you can quote me, is really an evolving, the evolved current version of PPM. We're not saying that PPM is going away in the least. And so from a maturity model, however, if you're evolving, if you're maturing in the space, you're going towards the SPM space. So the focus now not only on the right projects, but on the right portfolios, doing those things in the right time and using dynamic indicators to help you get there. So, so what do you mean by a dynamic indicator? Machine indicators. So measurable okay. data points, um, you know, we can use as AI as much as we can, but we still have Excel. We still have, you know, uh, analytics, uh, machine, not machine analytics, but we still have, you know, Excel and a series of reporting visualizations that will help us uh, with those things. The dynamic is really the nature of the change. You're receiving information all the time. Uh, that's that's my my uh, my mention okay. here of dynamic indicators. Yeah, great. So let's talk about next tenants. Um, and I sort of you know I, when I looked that up, the dictionary thought I was talking about tenants as, as in where people are living, but it's tenants and principles. That's why I spelled it out of the strategic portfolio management stuff. What we're talking about here is really how we're going to operate differently. And very much like, um, you know, as a kid uh, that learns what to look for uh, in a kitchen when the stove is hot, you know, you look for the red indicator. If it's electric, you look for the blue flame. If it's you know a gas grill, you might look for some uh, you know some uh, helpful home appliance that's going to tell you to stay away if you're a, a little kid looking to touch that. But there are other things like flipping your palm and actually you know using the sensitive hairs at the on the on the, on the bottom of your palm to see if a plate is hot or a surface is hot. Um, you'll know nothing about this, Don, but with baby bottles. <laughs> You'll know nothing about this, but with baby bottles where you flip, where I'm just curious, what do you flip and, and drip a couple of uh, drips of milk on? I'm sure you know this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah on, on the wrist. Right. And so why, I, and I why? Do it here. 
Just say so that curiosity. because it's more sensitive than than because the callus the callus is on your hand. You put it on your on your wrist so that you can make that's sure right. it's not too hot but or too cold. But that's right. What what is it particularly about the inside of your wrist? What 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 is the difference in that and all the other places on your body that have skin? Uh, <laughs> it's thin. You're putting me on the pla- on, It's thin. On I'm putting I, you. It's just it's super thin. That's also why this is a a place to oh, check yes, your yes. pulse. But the skin is super thin there as well. And callus is absolutely, you're not going to really rub, not you're playing guitar or playing instruments and something to rub the inside of your, of your yeah. wrist. But, but that's what By it is. By the way, so, so for, for the audience, so uh, Alan and I have a, have a, a good relationship. We actually uh, were, were on a trip together at one point in Aruba. So um, he's, he's well aware of my personal life. I have five children. That's why it would, that was so funny. I got to let people in on the choke. Why, why I would know nothing about, you know, baby bottles. Yeah, when you, when you see someone in a in a bathing suit, it just completely changes your whole perspective about the other person. But uh, let's just let's move on, Don. That's but good context. Good context. Now, now they've got that visual in their head. They're <laughs> absolutely. That be able to but, pay attention but what that anymore. is 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 literally you're talking about indicators. How do I know that I'm running an SPM shop or that we're doing things with sort of an SPM mindset? you have indicators. And so let's go through a few of those indicators, those tenants, if you will. So if you see some of the things um, that we're talking about here in the next several points, um, it, it is possible, if not probable, that you actually are running with strategic portfolio management. So let's go through. I've got a few of these for you. Um, the first there is, uh, the first tenant is a, one of hierarchy. So uh, once you get a lot of stuff and there are I think of the comedies of, of several older comics that have since moved on in life um, to the great beyond, but that talk about stuff. Um, George Carlin, I think, is who I was talking about. But the idea is you have stuff and you have, you know, when you go on vacation, you you take a smaller version of the stuff and you take it with you. And so when we're talking about hierarchy here, we're talking about where you put your stuff. And so one way to do that is shelves of information. Uh, you can go to Ikea, you can build some shelves for you, but those containers of information and of stuff have to be dynamic. Um, so what we're talking about here is containers of your, your initiatives. So it has to, you know, the solution that you're working within, it's very likely that you have some kind of hierarchy structure. And so it has to be dynamic and a good indicator or best of breed would be that it allows flexibility in the view and gives you multiple perspectives. And also it's very likely that if you're going to have a collection, a, a organization of your stuff, you're literally going to have, if you will, shelves of shelves or a portfolio of portfolios. I've, in each of these, I've given you sort of an image, but on the next page or the next slide, you actually have a much easier way of examining the same thing. So on the left-hand side, I'm giving you an example of an IT organization that has both, you know, from the ITSM standpoint, we see solutions as services that we're offering customers. And in this case, just a couple of examples of applications that you're offering your customers and your ERP and your web applications. And then also uh, in the IT operation space where Functional areas, your DBAs, your networks, your operation tools might be segregated by their function that you're bringing value from. The second example there is one of products. So that's just an example here of our ADM, our accelerate application delivery set of tools, some functional testing, some performance testing, some quality tools, also the, uh, the agile portfolio and DevOps space where each of those initiatives are categorized under those different headings. And then finally, sort of a classic uh, organizational unit. So here you have the name of the company at Vantage Inc. Um, and then you have multiple business units. The finance business unit even has further business units under it, accounting, controlling, treasury, and then you have some other business units. And so the work would be organized in that case um, under the different business units as opposed to some of those other examples. Let's keep going. So this is an example, uh, when we talk about perspective, I mean, you know, and this has been around for ages, and I love that we have our monster friends uh, visiting us, these graphics, in fact. So this is, I, I call it the tree swing, but if any of you have been in either IT or just in an engineering standpoint, this tree graphic has been around for at least 50 years. Uh, this older version from the 1970s, 
um, in black and white. Um, it has the perspective. What it's doing is attempting to portray the communication challenges that we have, that unless you put on the, the, the helmet or the mindset of some of those other personalities, those people that you're working with, you're not going to have clear communication. So it's attempting to break down those silos between the business. Go ahead and build the slide. Don? Well, I'd like to say for the record, you know, uh, the, oh. the 1970s, you know, the whole world was black and white back in there. This is actually a color <laughs> picture. It's just uh, you know, all the, sorry. all the, all the kids were, all the, all the cars right. were, all the, all the clothes were all, you know, exactly. That's the way it looks like in the pictures. What's the problem? You know, right. <laughs> all the pictures are black and white. Exactly. Um, so there we go. Yeah. So the 2020s version of the same idea um, I think, Don, when you saw this uh, in advance today, you said, well, you know, that not just that the song remains the same, but that literally we're facing the same challenges. And not only that, but it's gotten more complicated. We've got more personas that we're dealing with. Right. Um, you yeah. know, in fact, my favorite one is the one that talks about how the project was documented. Uh, literally, there's a there, there's the shadow of a tree, but like it really wasn't documented. This is we didn't even. Well, isn't that it. what the Agile Manifesto says? You don't have to document. Self documenting. That, tongue in cheek, by the way, guys. No, it's like <laughs> self 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 executing teams, self documenting teams, right? Shouldn't the software document document itself? Isn't that how yeah. it works? But but the whole idea here is that literally you have to put on a perspective, and so we have, and, and there is a new way that we're actually, it's a whole functional area uh, in the solutions that we're taking to market. Now, I, I know today isn't about our feature function, but it's, you've got to have multiple perspectives. And we have something called views of the world. And so we're literally able to see the same portfolio objects from a completely different perspective. So those three or four different scenarios that you saw there previously uh, from a financial uh, best uh, and, and a rules standpoint, we blocked those things. So from a consolidation and a roll up of finances, we, we locked those things down. But now um, all, all bets are off. You, you now can have, once this is released, you can have all of those objects literally in a different kind of architecture, you know, whether it's cost accounts, uh, whether it's uh, your teams, it's the same objects just in your perspective view. Your way of looking. So what I'm hearing is, is what you really are looking for in, in, a, in an SPM world is I want the persona to be able to view the data the way that they need to see it that's so right. they can make sense of it and make sense of it quickly. And, and you need a solution that's going to allow you that flexibility. And that's exactly right. Awesome. Okay. Thanks. That swing slide. I love that swing slide. So it's uh here we go. Uh, tenant two, alignment. So here, uh, a key thought in this space is directionality. Um, you're talking about alignment of the business. Now, whether you call it strategic objective, whether you call it business goal, uh, these are also the things that you're going to find in a annual report that we have to do from a, uh, a public company's perspective. Um, somewhere in that document, you're going to get a list of, of goals. Um, we improve the environment. We reduce our um, uh, carbon uh, emissions. We, um, do you see what I'm saying? It, somewhere in there, you're going to see. We we increase our our customer um, customer success. We earn our customer adoption by so many percentage points. Those can literally be extracted from that area because it's business conversations and literally become your business objectives, your strategic themes. And so the alignment with that, those things is what we're talking about. Aligning the work that you're doing independent initiatives with the strategic goals of the highest level of the business. Um, let's go to the next because I've, I've got some, um, some examples here. So we're, we're putting things into categories. Um, we're clearly and, and concisely connecting the visuals. On the left-hand side is a Sankey diagram, or on the left, you've got the title of the product. And on the right, um, you've graphically represented a connection between it and the strategic themes. Uh, the one at the top is a product roadmap. Those same color orientations, uh, the, sort of the cream, the pink, the green, the blue, those are the same uh, alignments to strategic theme. And in the bottom, you actually see a dynamic drop down list, which will allow you to select those strategic themes. Um, and so again, anytime you're having a conversation in those committees that are making those tough decisions about what things to fund, and we talked about stop, start, and continue, 
uh, fund things, uh, kill things, or continue executing things. Uh, these kinds of solutions, these kinds of tools are going to help you make those decisions. Let's keep going, Don. Um, so here we are, uh, tenant three traceability. A key here is, is to maintain insight. Um, what are we talking about? We're talking about the ability to actually maintain historical information to help you make those decisions. So uh, tenants would include things like KI, uh, KIA, <laughs> KPI indicators. Yeah, really. Well, there's, it, what, wow. what am I thinking about? Uh, Performance-based uh, matrix and also insightful analytics. There's several analytic tools, reporting analytic tools out there. Um, we, we even have the idea of, of, of AIs and bots that are gonna help make those decisions. Uh, one of the things in this space um, that the analysts sort of um, anticipate that we'll be able to cover what they call an OKR framework. In, in this space, OKR just stands for uh, objectives and key results. And so the idea here is a place where you can establish not only do I have a goal of you know, reducing my carbon footprint, but I'm gonna statistically measure where I am today and how I'm declining my carbon footprint over time. That's just an example for you. So something like uh, something like in the in the services or in the manufacturing in industries, one of the key metrics that we all uh, measure ourselves on are our NPS net pro net promoter score. Net and so you're talking score. about stuff like that, right? That's exactly what I'm talking about. In fact, if you've gone to any of our, you mentioned that we're having our ADM user conference coming up. If you've been interviewed uh, at one of those or attended in person back in the day, uh, when you could attend in person, you were always interviewed. And part of that would be your net promoter score. We'd give you a, a range of, of indices and you'd just pick uh, which one you felt like, and that would be consolidated with hundreds of other customers. And we'd have a, a you know an average of our net promoter scores. So uh, yeah, absolutely, Don. That's a great business example. Awesome. Let's, let's keep going. So I gave you a little snippet of what that looked look like. <clears throat> and this is just sort of a, a larger view of the same things. On the left-hand side, you have a status of those different uh, key indices. Uh, you've got some trend information. This is that traceability information was starting to look like a stock market report at this point, but you also sort of see historical. The it had to be up. going down over the, the last trend year, is up right? The trend <laughs> is down. Yes, absolutely. Um, but also, you know, clear indices. If it's on hold, if it's uh, if it's been canceled, uh, if we missed it, if we're getting close to missing it, et cetera. Um, you've got to drill down on the right hand side and then sort of that pie chart, which you're like, pie is not real interesting, but what is that pie chart? Um, the pie chart actually is showing how you're operating in that space, but it's showing association with consumption of resources. So it takes the FTE, which is full time equivalent information, and it says, well, based on your strategic uh, plan, as it is right now, these are the amounts of you know, human uh, resources that you're going to need to complete that work. And so you can go down to that level, trace how much human effort it would take to complete those things and associate the percentage of the overall work, that the whole enterprise is working on to the initiatives that you, or your, your goals that you have with the organization. And then I would assume that there's a, there's another status that's KIA, right? Killed in action, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I uh -huh. myself. There would be. Yeah, somewhere. It's at the end. You know, it's, it's it's, the end. There's probably things dripping off of it. Yeah. <laughs> Video <laughs> oh, game reference. That's horrible. Horrible. Let's keep going. Uh, tenant four, uh, to be prioritized. So, so you've got something that's prioritizing the work that you're doing. Um, and it's going to be, you know, more than just the ability to rank things, but that's a, that's a, a tenant. You have to be able to say order of operation, do these things first. Once those things are done, move on. Now, if obviously in a large enterprise, uh, you can accomplish more than one based on how many teams, um, in fact, uh, teams of efforts that you can engage on. But in this case, uh, it needs to be dynamic and, and no notice at all. You'd be able to, to rearrange the work that you're doing. You know, COVID happened. No one knew that was happening. But in a few months, uh, it was amazing how many companies started making 
um, chemicals that would prevent further infection for COVID patients. You know, and that just before that, maybe they'd done research, but all of a sudden it became a lot more important. Uh, so you've got to have, you know, you don't have got to, but some of the attributes when including ranking those initiatives, some collaborative feedback mechanism that's going to allow multiple teams of experts uh, to, to chime in, uh, to provide feedback on what's going on with that environment. I see that we're about 35 minutes into. I know, Don, you're keeping track. We've got one more tenant yep. to cover, but we'll talk fast. And then a weighted system of measurements. It needs to be non-biased too. Um, so all that political Chitter chat that happens in in all organizations needs to be minimized here. Um, so on the oh, left, I can't tell side, you how many times when I was on oh a customer gosh. advisory board that you know uh, uh, office politics uh, influenced some of the decisions that were in there at at multiple companies that I worked with that you could it's just hear the, the office politics. It, everyone at the table doesn't have the same size of hammer either. Right? Yep, it's I mean, absolutely going to be larger uh, in, impacts. And in certain people that have more weight in the organization. So, uh, or stroke, that's what we would call it. Who's got the stroke in the room? That's, that's a much better way of positioning that. <laughs> so, on the left hand side, you see just a dynamic way of having multiple fields of indice. There's some uh, kind of uh, classic project indice net promoter, net present value NP, PV, and ROI, return on investment, would be some indicators. There's a score indicator. And this is just a view of a weighted system where selecting criteria based on weights, those weights actually create a scoring mechanism. And you can use that, you know, the higher the score, the more value and the less risk. And that's just a mechanism to use to also help you make those decisions. Let's go to the next one. I think it's the last one. Yes, it is. Um, and so basically here we talk about scenarios. Um, uh, the what if scenario is really what we're talking about here. And the ability to do that what if planning, that dynamic ability of the system, because it's a system of record, you have to be able to make changes on the fly. Um, that The idea of an annual process and marching to the annual process might be a, a dream, and it's something that over governance has actually prevented some companies from being dynamic. But the idea here in an SPM or strategic portfolio space is you've got to be dynamic. You've got to use mechanisms to help you with optimizing those scenarios. Let's go to the next or the second to last slide. Um, on the left is just a, an idea of some constraints. You've got financial constraints and you've got human resource supply constraints. Um, on the right, we have a, something that we call uh, the optimization of those, so that's KPI forecasting. So if I do a good job or I deliver on a certain date, here's the anticipated uh, positive impact that we're gonna make to some of those KPIs, in this case, like a support revenue KPI. And then just the drag and drop, you can uh, represent breaks in the work and you can drag and drop both uh, the resource and the financial information. You see sort of the gray areas done in that uh, lower right-hand corner, the shaded areas. Those are the, uh, the initial plan of record, and then you're able to plan a new one. So instead of a, yeah, that's it. <laughs> instead of the original plan that would happen based on, you know, the, the structured, uh, the forecast a plan, you, you're able to, in the bluer areas, you're able to drag and drop new scenarios, new start dates, um, and represent breaks in the work um, in a scenario-based planning environment. Okay, that's it. Um, the next slide, um, you might ask, um, is just sort of about what next. And so this is to help those on the call that are sort of ready for that next step, ready for uh, maturing. And so we have some best practices uh, to help. And But this is sort of just a, a quick hit of what could come up next. So if you're if you're thinking about starting to adopt some of these things, what if is a great reason, way to begin uh, helping with the constraints of, based on finances and based on your, your, your human resources. Um, next would be increasing the adoption, doing strategic alignment. And then finally, value driving, working with those KPIs, doing those like KPI forecasting and using some of those KPI mechanisms to help you make those decisions. So that's just one way um, to help you on your journey of, of adopting the space. But uh, yeah, I, I definitely hit the end of my time. I appreciate everyone's attention. Don, I'm going to turn it back to you and our moderators. 
Well, Alan, thank you so much for, for coming in to give us a high-level overview of what is SPM, uh, Strategic Portfolio Management. Really appreciate you taking the time.